All right, we will now resume our meeting. Madam City Clerk, may you please call the roll? Thank you, Mayor. Council Member Stapp? Here. Council Member Rogers? Council Member Okrepke? Here. Council Member Fleming? Here. Council Member Alvarez? Vice Mayor McDonald? Here. Mayor Rogers? Present. Let the record show that all council members are present with the exception of Council Member Rogers and Council Member Alvarez. We have no study sessions today, so we'll go on to item five, our report on our closed session. Uh, thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, the Council just met in closed session on item 2.1, which is conference with legal counsel and in anticipated litigation. Uh, the council did receive information from legal counsel and uh, no final action was taken. Thank you. Thank you. We'll now move on to item 6.1 and 6.2, our proclamations for this afternoon. Um, item 6.1 will be read by council member Stapp. Thank you, Mayor Rogers. Whereas, we are here today to express special recognition to Alan Silo and to honor him for his distinguished two decade plus career as president and CEO of the Santa Rosa Symphony. And whereas, upon his retirement, Alan Silo will be named the symphony's first president and CEO emeritus in the 95 year history of the Santa Rosa Symphony. And whereas, the Santa Rosa Symphony has grown to become the third largest in the state with a music education program that serves some 30,000 young people each year. And whereas, Alan has led the Santa Rosa Symphony to be widely recognized on the state and national orchestral map for organizational excellence, artistically, educationally, and financially. And whereas, some of the highlights of Alan's career include accomplishing 20 consecutive years of being cash positive, unsurpassed by any other California orchestra, overseeing an endowment fund that grew from 1.5 million to 17 million today, displaying commanding leadership that helped rejuvenate a capital fundraising campaign to raise 145 million to build Sonoma State, Sonoma State University's world-class Green Music Center, where Sonoma State Symphony has been the resident orchestra since 2012. And as a side note, a special thanks from the Sonoma State University Advancement Office for that, for that assistance. And whereas Alan's legacy of leadership as a champion of the arts has made a meaningful distance, difference in our community. Now therefore, be it resolved that I, Natalie Rogers, mayor of the city of Santa Rosa, on behalf of the entire city council, do hereby recognize Alan Silo for his vital contributions to the city of Santa Rosa and the Santa Rosa Symphony. You are more than welcome to say something. I was just going to invite you to the podium to say something. Well, if you need to, you can come right here if that's easier for you. And I just want to say, I don't think anyone has ever applauded for me for that long. So you are very special. <laughs> 21 years does count for something. Uh, I'll be brief, but I just wanted to say, you know, when I first came here, when I was interviewed for the position back in the spring of 2002, uh, the board asked me for one word to encapsulate the value of my contribution of being here. And I said the one word was community. Because for me, for my entire career, the thread of motivation has always been how do I make a significant difference in the community that I serve? And with the Santa Rosa Symphony, I would say mission accomplished beyond our wildest dreams. Um, you know, the most important thing that I'm taking with me is, is, is the knowledge and the proof that our work and most of the people back behind me are part of that contribution is that our work has made a real meaningful difference in the lives of our community. 
and in a small way made this world a better place. And I'm very grateful for that and grateful for that proclamation. Thank you so much. Madam City Clerk, may you please facilitate public comment. Thank you. We are now taking public comment on item 6.1. If you are in the council chamber and would like to make a comment but have not provided a speaker card or your name, please make your way to the podiums. If you are participating via Zoom, please raise your hand or dial star 9. You will have three minutes and a countdown timer will alert at the end of that period. Oh, Mr. Allen, we would like you to take a picture with us if you would be so kind to do so after we conduct our public comment, which we have to do legally. So if you can just hold tight for two seconds, we will give you your written proclamation and uh, take a photo with you. Thank you. So um, as there's lots of movement in the chamber, is anyone approaching the podium for public comment? Give me a, a high five or a wave so I can move on to Zoom if there's no one in public in the chamber. Okay, I see no one in council chamber and I see no hands being raised via Zoom. All right, thank you very much. Mr. Allen, if you can make your way down um, and whoever else you would like to be in the photo, we would love to take a photo with you, thank you. All right, we will be moving on to our second proclamation of the afternoon, and that will be read by Council Member Fleming. Uh, well, this is um, 
also about beauty and community. So what a beautiful day we have here in the chambers. Whereas the City of Santa Rosa Recreation and Parks Department make life better with equitable access to local parks, recreation, trails, open space, and facilities to promote the positive development of all citizens and residents, and whereas the Recreation and Parks Department promotes physical, emotional, and mental health wellness through organized and self-directed fitness, play, and activity, and whereas the Recreation and Parks Department supports the economic vitality of communities by partnering with local businesses and nonprofits and offering events for residents' engagement, and whereas Recreation and Parks Department creates memorable experiences through youth, sport, enrichment activities, youth and adult programs, senior activity centers, adult fitness, enrichment programs, free community events, and beyond. And the Recreation and Parks Department fosters social cohesiveness in communities by celebrating diversity, providing spaces to come together peacefully, modeling compassion, promoting social equity, creating social networks, and ensuring all people have access to benefits. It supports human development and endless learning opportunities that foster intellectual, physical, and emotional growth in people of all ages and strengthens community identity by providing facilities and services that reflect and celebrate community character, heritage, culture, aesthetics, and landscape, and facilitates community problem and issue resolution by providing safe spaces to come together peacefully and serving as a key point of service, helping our communities heal both physically and emotionally and sustains and stewards our national resources, natural resources by protecting habitats and open space, connecting people to nature and promoting the ecological function of parkland and support safe, vibrant, attractive, and progressive communities that make life better through positive alternatives offered in their recreational opportunities and remains versatile and innovative in providing vital services to communities through local, national, or global emergencies, all while adhering to guidelines set forth by governing agencies. And whereas the California Park and Recreation Society has re released a statewide public awareness campaign, Parks Make Life Better, to inform citizens of the many benefits of utilizing parks, facilities, programs, and services, be it resolved that Natalie Rogers, Mayor of the City of Santa Rosa, on behalf of the Council, do hereby recognize July 2023 as Parks Make Life Better Month. I just, if, if I may, Mayor, I just want to thank you for assigning me this incredibly, it's got to be the windiest resolution, and I left out like half of it, um, because the, the reason why I'm so grateful to have this one is because of the work that each and every one of you sitting out there and all of your colleagues who couldn't be here do is the most impactful thing that we have that's always positive with our residents, whether it's a kid swimming at a pool or a senior working out at the, the senior facility or someone on a trail or getting to just have a moment of peace and quiet because they can't have it in their home or their school or whatever it is. You touch every Santa Rosen's life in a positive and meaningful way, and our debt of gratitude towards the work that you do cannot be adequately expressed in a proclamation, although really, we, we, we tried. Um, and I would like to invite whoever is here to receive the proclamation to say a few words, but I will take the liberty of saying um, I definitely enjoy Park a Month, and I know that you guys are like, that's your thing, and I love it. And my family was able to plant a tree this last Saturday, so every time we go to Juilliard Park, we will know that that is our tree. Although it is not our tree, everyone, but it is our tree, because we planted it, it was hard work. So whoever is here to receive the proclamation, please do come say a few words. Thank you. Mayor Rogers, Vice Mayor McDonald, and Council Members, I'm Jen Santos with the City of Santa Rosa Recreation and Parks Department, newly reformed. 
So happy about that. And uh, how lucky are we to have over a thousand acres to offer our community citizens to play and recreate. Um, as you may be aware, we are often called the Department of Fun, and um, that is definitely true, as you've heard the proclamation. We do provide fun programs, activities, and spaces. Uh, we agree that it's also vital to our community and our well-being as humans and as the collective we, our city's residents and visitors. July is a really busy time for all of our park staff, all of my colleagues are here, and those who couldn't be here are hopefully watching or will find out later. <laughs> um, we have hired over 300 temporary employees to manage our programs, which we do every year for our maintenance and recreation programs. And from everyone in Recreation and Parks, we want to thank our citizens and the City Council for caring about parks and proclaiming July as Parks Make Life Better Month. Thank you. Thank you, Madam City Clerk. May you please conduct public comment. Thank you. We are now taking public comment on item 6.2. If you are in council chamber and would like to comment but have not provided a speaker card or your name, please make your way to the podium. If you are participating via Zoom, please raise your hand or dial star 9. You will have three minutes and a countdown timer will alert at the end of that period. Seeing no one approaching the podiums in Zoom or in the council chamber and no hands being raised via Zoom, that concludes public comment. Thank you. With no additional or no comment, I would like to invite all of you down to take a picture with the council. All right, we will now continue on to item seven, our staff briefings. Madam City Manager. Good evening, Madam Mayor. I do not have any updates this evening. I think they, um, you will hear a couple updates from the council members uh, this evening that would have normally come from the City Manager's office. Oh, it's been a long day. Um, there are no staff briefings today. Is there one? Okay, let me start over. Hold on, let me turn my mic off. <laughs> Item 7.1 is the community empowerment plan update. <laughs> Lon Peterson, can you Lon, make your way to the- are you in the, the building?
Good afternoon, uh, Mayor and City Council. Um, community empowerment update for this uh, meeting. We are currently um, in the process of hiring a communications um, engagement manager. Is it? Okay, thanks. Um, as well as uh, in the process of working it with HR to hire a, an admin secretary for the engagement um, department. And that's my update for this month. Thank you. You're welcome. I would like to invite Mr. James Castro down for a park a month update. Oh, Jennifer. Director Santos and Mr. James Castro down for a park a month update. Yeah, item 7.2 is a park a month program update. We're gonna get it together here soon. Hello again, Mayor Rogers, Vice Mayor McDonald, Council Members, Jen Santos, uh, Deputy Director for Parks. And with me today, I have Jeff Tibbetts, our Recreation uh, Deputy, as well as James Castro, our Park Superintendent. And we're here to talk about the Park a Month Volunteer Program. Um, let's see. Next slide. There we go. Figuring out the technology here. Thank you for your patience. So um, we wanted to talk about the volunteer, uh, the Park a Month program. We have a lot of variety of park programs, but specifically today we're going to talk just about the Park a Month program, although there are lots of opportunities out there. Um, we developed the program with the idea that it would be a simple way and an easy way, a convenient way for the community to participate in volunteering in parks. Um, it's the second Saturday of every month, super easy to remember, 9 a.m. to noon. It's a city organized event, so we put an annual schedule together, uh, which you can see over to the right side of the screen. That's what it looks like. We also have handouts up at the top um, there, as well as all the council members have one. And this information is available on our srcity.org website as well. When you look and see what you would like to come and join a volunteer park a month event, you can simply walk up and sign up at the event that day, or you can sign up online. Either way is just fine. We have a lot of staff and tools um, to help you. So we make it super easy. We have uh, tools such as gloves, rakes, buckets, trash pickers, and similar for the projects, such as spreading mulch, playground fiber, or sand painting, trash pickup, weed removal, and small projects such as planting a tree, as the mayor mentioned. Um, we also uh, provide a lot of appreciation for our volunteers. Um, our staff work really hard out there to keep, ter keep track of the park and take care of it, um, and it's amazing and appreciative to us that we have volunteers coming to do this work. Um, at, we had our volunteer appreciation last week at Juilliard Park last Saturday, uh, where we had um, a lunch provided by the mayor for our volunteers. Much appreciation for that. And we pro we're looking at doing this a little bit more than annual, but right now we're um, at an annual appreciation for our volunteer, for our volunteers. Um, on the right, the card that you see on the right there is our program, and it's really easy. All Every single month is on there and where we are going to be at the next month. Each of these is a really fun event. We have um, music, we have snow cones, <laughs> we have a lot of appreciation for our volunteers who do amazing work. Um, 
We were, as I mentioned last Saturday at Juilliard where we removed trash, we spread playground sand, does a hard job, <laughs> planted trees and removed weeds. Uh, we also were there with the folks from Recology. Uh, we were learning all about recycling that day as well. It was really fun. Um, Last weekend, we also teamed up with the Clean Santa Rosa program, and so you could either come and volunteer in the park or clean up along Santa Rosa Avenue and some of our streets around Juilliard Park. And thanks again for the mayor for honoring our volunteers and staffs with our hot dog lunch at the last event. So um, we wanted to talk about this event, uh, about the Park a Month program. It's a very successful program, and here's the numbers to show you what we mean by that. Uh, we are at 415 volunteers, which has doubled our participation over the last year. We had 11 events this year and uh, approximately 1,245 volunteer hours. These are amazing events, and um, if anyone knows how hard our park maintenance staff <laughs> Uh, work. Uh, we really do appreciate the time spent by our volunteers to come and do the work for us. It, it makes a huge difference. Uh, one of the things I wanted to talk about is how do we operate this program. We really operated as a team, and that's why you see uh, the team here from Rec and Parks. We, our recreation team is busy putting together the um, opportunities for people to volunteer online. They bring staff, um, temporary staff, to help volunteers sign up for the day of. They are working with our comms team to make sure everything's updated on our website and that there's a lot of information on the website and available to folks to make it very easy to participate in our Park a Month program. Our park maintenance staff are busy organizing the day of, bringing tools and bringing our uh, lovely Parks Make Life Better volunteer trailer. Um, and it's full of tools and supplies from for our volunteers at the park, as well as that snow cone machine and music. Our park planners are working together with the maintenance team to select and place trees in advance of the program so that we're putting the right tree in the right location so that it can reach full maturity. Our volunteer programs, including Park a Month, with everyone from Rec and Parks teams contributing to a successful volunteer event. Um, and then following our Park a Month event every month, the park maintenance team follows up on the following Wednesday with additional support from the team that are directed specifically at the location we had the Park a Month at. So we're doing more heavier duty items with um, chainsaws and tools that need skills and um, we're uh, cleaning things that require um, the skill sets and the training of our park maintenance team um, following that. So it's a really targeted effort, not just from a volunteer base, but also from our staff base to really focus on one particular park per month to really give that park that extra special attention. We've got a couple of our um, Rec and Recreation teammates there on the presentation. You see Kim Hatch in the circle. She's our Recreation Coordinator. She does a lot of the organizing up front with volunteers as well as making sure the information is on our website is clear, making sure the um, back end of that program is working really well. Uh, she is followed by a series of folks behind her that also help support that. You're just seeing one image today of one staff member. Uh, the same with Elio Toronto, our Park Maintenance Supervisor. He is, of course, uh, representing, representing a huge team of park maintenance staff that were in here earlier. And uh, we really enjoy the parks team and really enjoys these events. It's a great time to get out and meet your community members and do something that's a really positive benefit for our community and provides that beautiful space um, that we enjoy in our parks. And so, um, you know, we, when we care for our pikes, we're really caring for our community, ourselves, and the people who live, visit, and play in Santa Rosa. I encourage anyone of any age to volunteer with Park a Month. It's very easy. Just show up on the day of or sign up online prior to the event. Our next Park a Month is planned for Pioneer Park at 2062 Peterson Lane, and that's just north of College Avenue in our northwest part of the city. As I've mentioned, we always have music, snow cones, and very much appreciation and support for our volunteers. The easiest way, if you want, would like some more information, is to um, check out our link, srcity.org backslash 
backslash parks volunteer. That'll take you to our volunteer page and you can see all of the programs that we offer, not just park a month, or you can also go to srcity.org backslash park a month if you would like specifically to go to that program that we offer. Uh, if you just would like to email somebody about it, there's our volunteer Santa Rosa at srcity.org for an email. We also have um, our phone number for reaching out if you just have questions, 707-543-3279. Super easy to get a hold of us and talk to us. There's lots of volunteer programs to be part of. This one is a very, very easy one, once a month. And again, we very much appreciate our volunteers. And um, with that, I'll take any, we're here to answer any questions. These are the experts here <laughs> if you have any questions. Thank you. Are there any questions from council? Council member Stapp? No questions, but I just wanted to, to reiterate what's been said from the dais here, from those of us who volunteered, um, that this, that, that you make the program a lot of fun. It's a lot of work for city staff, but speaking as a volunteer, um, when you show up, everything's organized, um, and it turns out to be just a, a, a great morning and a great chance for the community to come together. So th thank you very much for, for putting the resources and the time towards this, towards this project. Vice Mayor McDonald. Yes, I just wanted to say thanks to the staff. I've been able to attend a lot of the Park a Month events. Um, as far as jobs go, mine is the snow cone girl, so nobody gets to do that as a volunteer and I'm there. But other than that, it is a great opportunity to get out. And I didn't realize how many parks we actually had in the city of Santa Rosa. So if there's a way you can expand on that so that the community knows just how many parks we have. Uh, and seeing no additional uh, comments. I would like to make a comment and say that not only are the staff there, but they're there with smiles. They're there willing to teach us how to use tools that maybe some of us, like myself, have never uh, been able to use before. And it helps us to have a sense of pride within our, our community. And so I really love this I love this program, and um, James, I've never been to a park a month that you were not there wearing a smile and willing to help, and you're there from the time it starts, and I mean, you're just, you're fabulous. So thank you so much for having this program. Thank you for carrying it out in a very thoughtful, inviting way so people want to volunteer. It makes, it makes it all worth it. Thank you so much. And with that, Madam City Clerk, may you please conduct public comment. Thank you. We are now taking public comment on item seven, both staff briefings. If you are in the chamber and would like to comment but have not provided a speaker card or your name, please make your way to the podium. If you are participating via Zoom, please raise your hand or dial star nine. You will have three minutes and a countdown timer will alert at the end of that period. Mayor, I'm seeing uh, no one approach the podiums and there are no hands being raised for the uh, staff briefings. With that, thank you very much for the presentation. We will be moving to item eight, city manager and city attorney reports. City manager does not have a report today. Madam City Attorney, do you have a report? Uh, yes, thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, this is our monthly uh, settlements and litigation report. Um, I know we've, um, the council's been at this, uh, it's been a long meeting starting early this morning, so I'll keep it short. Um, we do have listed as a settlement, the settlement that we've reached in Palio versus uh, Utility Partners of America. I did report out on this case verbally at our last meeting, um, but it is now uh, also published on our list. Uh, just as a reminder, it's a prevailing wage case um, that was arose out of installation of enhanced water meters across the city. Um, we have reached a settlement um, with the plaintiffs and the courts um, have affirmed that settlement as a good faith settlement. Uh, so the city has no further liability in that case. And the settlement amount was $250,000. In terms of pending litigation, we have about 26 uh, cases currently pending. Uh, several com very complex cases. We are deep in discovery, uh, taking a lot of staff time on those. 
Um, we have two, tr two cases that are set for trial this fall, and then another set for trial in the coming year in 2024. Um, so we are keeping quite busy, um, and I'm happy to answer any questions. Are there any questions from council? Seeing none, Madam City Clerk, may you please conduct public comment. Thank you, we are now taking public comment on item 8.1. If you are in the council chamber and would like to provide public comment but have not provided a speaker card or your name, please make your way to the podium. If you are participating via Zoom, please raise your hand or dial star nine. You will have three minutes and a countdown timer will alert at the end of that period. Mayor, I see no hands being raised via Zoom and I see no one approaching the podium for public comment in chamber. Thank you. Moving on to item nine, statements of abstention by council members. Are there any statements of abstention from council members for today? Seeing none, we will move on to item 10, mayor and council members reports. Um, before we start, I would just like to say I'm happy to report that Congressman Thompson and Congressman Jared Huffman announced on Monday, June 26, that the city of Santa Rosa has received just under $10 million grant from the bipartisan infrastructure law to put new American-built buses on the road and improve transit services in Santa Rosa. The grant is for phase three of the diesel bus fleet conversion to battery electric buses with supporting charging infrastructure projects. So we are very, very, very happy about that. Are there any report out from council members? Council member staff. Thank you, Mayor Rogers. Uh, a few items from me. On June 22nd, the Ag and Open Space Advisory Committee met, um, and I'm sure that Scott Alonzo was already in, on the inside of this, um, but the Advisory Committee did recommend um, additional funding for Tierra de Rosas, but unfortunately not for Colgan Creek. Um, so that's, that is still in process with a final decision to be made by the, by the, um, the full board uh, sometime later this summer. Then on June 24th, Lo Cien held its annual Puente Iganas Awards um, with catering, delicious catering done by Octavio and Pedro Diaz. Thank you very much. Um, there were 500 or so folks out that evening. It was a great event. Senator McGuire did a, his usual nice job as auctioneer and a significant amount of money was made to allow more youth to attend Lo Cien events in the future. Then on June 27th, uh, there was a, a really interesting event. Uh, it was, a, it was a, a, an event that was coordinated between Sonoma County Water and the Danish Trade Commission, focused on water distribution and resilience uh, with, with pretty wide participation by um, a number of Danish agencies or Danish affiliated entities, um, as well as a number of, of local water, water agencies, including Sonoma or Santa Rosa Water, um, Jennifer Burke and Peter Martin both represented, uh, and um, Supervisor Hopkins and I had the had the honor of, of making introductions, uh, but a really a really um, interesting conference that day, um, in 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 combination with with the Danish Trade Commission, uh, and then finally on June 27th, or well, the same day actually, um, the Violence Prevention Partnership held, held its first uh, uh, community meeting to go over the strategic plan, um, and it was it was particularly well timed. A few of us were there, including Councilmember Rogers. Um, given given the youth violence that is has been very publicly occurring in our community in recent weeks and months. Um, as you can imagine, there was a significant community turnout, a lot of interest, a lot of conversation. Um, Daniel Garduño and Ernesto Oliveras um, and the entire Violence Prevention Partnership team did a really nice job of facilitating the meeting under emotional circumstances. Uh, so it was a, a, an extremely productive kickoff to what will be um, an addition, what will be a series of strategic, or a, a series of community meetings around the, the violence prevention partnership strategic plan. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you. Council Member Rogers. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, so we last week had our Climate Action Subcommittee meeting where in which we walked through our current iteration of the Climate Action Plan, both the community and the municipal ones, and laid out a timeline uh, looking forward for updating our existing one by rolling it into a lot of the work that we're doing uh, and creating an annex within our general plan update related to climate and really having it filter throughout. Uh, so thank you to both my colleagues for being there. Uh, the, the mayor and council member Fleming. We also had our monthly meeting for uh, 
Sonoma County Transportation Authority, the Regional Climate Protection Authority yesterday. The two main items of discussion, uh, one was advancing the recruitment for the new executive director with Suzanne Smith retiring. Uh, council members should see the brochure and the job posting for that as early as next week. Uh, and we would encourage folks to circulate that far and wide so that we get a good candidate pool for that replacement. Uh, it'll be open for about a month. Uh, the second item was looking at the RCPA ballot measure that we have been working on for about a year and specifically looking at the public information polling that was behind it. The top level results is that pretty much no measure is viable at the moment, uh, particularly with a two thirds majority uh, needed uh, to obtain that. So we're gonna circle back and come up with different strategies for helping cities uh, and the county to advance climate solutions. Uh, the other final thing was we had our monthly Sonoma Clean Power meeting uh, this last Thursday. Uh, one issue to keep on your radar, as I like to frequently do, uh, PG&E has proposed and has received the preliminary approval from FERC to split off a number of their energy generation assets into a new LLC. Uh, pg and &E is saying that they are going to do this as a means for raising capital to advance some of the projects around resiliency and fire. It just also would happen to have the side effect of shielding those assets in the event of an additional bankruptcy. Uh, so it's something that we are keeping a close eye on given, as I previously reported out, the challenges that pg and &E has had in, in energizing communities and putting in new transformers and generation uh, for approved projects. So just something for council to keep an eye on. Thank you. Council member Okrepke. Thank you, Mayor. Um, on June 22nd, I uh, was able to attend the Sip and See grand opening of the Boys and Girls Club in Roseland. Um, phenomenal facility that uh, a lot of our staff here um, was able to not only attend, but be a part of getting it to uh, completion. Um, it's a sorely needed uh, asset to that community f um, to take care of um, after school needs and, and, and um, community needs. Um, on June 26th, I was able to attend the Santa Rosa Police Department's command staff briefing, um, which was able to give me an, uh, an education of what the command staff does on a monthly basis. And, and it just so happened to coincide with the, um, uh, the process getting started for the apprehension of the suspected individuals alleged to be responsible for the June 24th shooting. Uh, in the meeting, the first uh, identification of the possible suspects and their location was made um, and so not only was I able to see the command staff uh, do what they do on a regular basis but see all of that um, uh, the response to that go forward um, at the same time which was very interesting and then on June 29th I attended uh, the Sonoma County Farm Bureau premier member luncheon um, out at uh, Dutton Ranch um, and it was a uh, Beautiful facility, and it was uh, great to hear uh, that community and the guest speaker, uh, David Rabbit, discuss the future of agriculture and family-owned um, businesses uh, in rural um, Sonoma County uh, in the future for um, and what uh, it holds for those individuals. Thank you. And I would just like to make a change in uh, subcommittee appointments for my report. I would like to appoint Council Member Jeff Okrepke to chair the Public Safety Subcommittee. So thank you um, for agreeing to do that, Council Member Okrepke. And with that, Madam City Clerk, may you please conduct public comment. Thank you, Mayor. We are now taking public comment on item 10. If you're in the council chamber and you'd wish to provide a public comment but have not provided a speaker card or your name, please make your way to the podium. If you are participating via Zoom, please raise your hand or dial star nine. You will have three minutes and a countdown timer will alert at the end of that period. Mayor, I see no hands being raised via Zoom and no one approaching the podium for public comment. Thank you. Moving to item 11, approval of minutes. We have two sets of minutes to approve. June 6, 2023, a regular meeting, and June 20th, 2023, a regular meeting. Council, are there any corrections to the minutes? Seeing none, Madam City Clerk, can you please facilitate public comment on item 11? 
Thank you. We are now taking public comment on item 11. If you are in council chamber and would like to comment but have not provided your speaker card, please make your name way to the podium. If you are participating via Zoom, please raise your hand or dial star nine. Again, you will have three minutes and a countdown timer will alert at the end of that period. I see no hands being raised via Zoom and no one approaching the podium, so that concludes public comment on item 11. Then we will adopt the minutes as presented. Thank you. Moving to item 12, consent items. Madam City Clerk, can you please read the consent items? Thank you, Mayor. Item 12.1, motion authority to issue design build request for proposals for Samuel L. Jones Hall homeless shelter phase two improvements. Item 12.2, motion contract award for Santa Rosa pavement maintenance 2023. Item 12.3, resolution approval professional services agreement number F002619 for federal legislative advocacy services with H. Rod Inc. DBA MMO partners. Item 12.4, resolution acceptance and appropriation of the State of California's Business Consumer Services and Housing Agency Encampment Resolution Funding Grant of 3.88 million. Item 12.5, resolution, cooperative purchase of one mobile hostage negotiation unit from LDV Inc. Item 12.6, resolution, cooperative purchase of five replacement transit and paratransit cutaway vehicles. Item 12.7, resolution, acceptance and appropriation of grant funds from California State Library, targeted state grants for construction of the permanent library within the Hearn Community Hub project as amended earlier today. Uh, those documents were uh, uploaded to the public portal and shared with council at the same time. Um, and the amendment is to authorize the city manager rather than the chief financial officer to appropriate funds. Item 12.8, resolution, second amendment to professional services agreement F002544 with Kims and Creative LLC for assistance with the city's public art program. Item 12.9, resolution, first amendment to professional services agreement F002578 with David Tossig and Associates, Inc., DBA, DTA. Item 12.10 has been continued to a date uncertain. Item 12.11, resolution amendment to blanket purchase order number 165561 with Emergency Equipment Management, Inc. Item 12.12, .12, resolution of the Council of the City of Santa Rosa to amend uh, for amendment to purchase order 164812 for Zoom, a three-year contract ex or a three-year extension under the NASPO Value Master Cooperative Agreement AR2472 and State of California Participating Addendum 7-17-70-40-05. Item 12.3 or 12.13 resolution third amendment to general services agreement. Number F000599 for one year extension with Acela Inc. for planning and development related services. Item 12.14, resolution approval of amendment to blanket purchase order number 166038 with Cone Inc. for elevator and lift maintenance. 12.15, resolution approval of amendment to blanket purchase order 166742 with Day Management Corporation, DBA Day Wireless Systems for maintenance, repair, and inspection services for existing communications equipment. Item 12.16, resolution appointment of interim city attorney, establishment of compensation and approval of professional service agreement, prof excuse me, professional services agreement with Burke Williams and Sorensen LLP. and to introduce an ordinance to establish the compensation for the interim city attorney. Item 12.17, ordinance adoption, second reading, ordinance of the Council of the City of Santa Rosa, amending Title VI of the Santa Rosa City Code, Chapter 6-66, rent control mobile homes to set cumulative limit on rent increases for combined calendar years 2023 and 2024. 
And Thank Madam, you. Madam Mayor, we do have one correction, um, and I apologize for this. Um, on item 12.7, uh, the, the, we're, we're going to correct what was just announced. Um, the changes are, this is the acceptance and appropriation of grant funds from California State Library targeted state grants for construction of the permanent library within the Hearn Community Hub project. And the changes will be that it'll be authorizing the city manager rather than the assistant city manager to execute all related documents required for receiving such funds. And uh, in terms of authorizing for appropriations, it will still be the chief financial officer. Uh, so you'll all be authorizing the chief financial officer to increase appropriations to account number 17662 by the amount of the grant award. So we apologize for that confusion. Thank you. Thank you. Bringing it back to council, our council member Rogers. Thank you, Mayor. I just wanted to make a quick comment on item 12.3 uh, and just a huge thank you to Kiriakis and John and the entire team who have been there with us uh, all the way through our fire rebuild. You reported out earlier on funding that came from Department of Transportation and they were instrumental and critical in getting that and I think it's just a really good example of the return on investment that we've had as a city from their services uh, and also I know how much they care about this partnership so I wanted to say thank you. Council Member Alvarez. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, I'd rather not pull item 12.1 and 12.5. If I could simply ask a question about both of those, uh, I'd prefer to do so. Yes, you can start with 12.1. Thank you. In, in, in regards to 12.1, where do the complaints about Samuel Jones Hall go to? Do they ever receive, uh, actually arrive to a city department, or is there a way that council can look at these complaints from residents? Good evening, Council. I'm Megan Bassinger, Director of Housing and Community Services. When complaints are received from individuals who are accessing services at Sam Jones Hall, they can come through Catholic Charities and then our staff in Housing and Community Services reviews those and we work with the uh, shelter operator to address those concerns. And a follow-up question, do those concerns ever reach any of our administrators here, whether it be the city manager or city attorney? They do, perfect. And I'm seeing that depending the, the on the, the extent nodding. of the concerns. Okay, very well, thank you. And that was the extent of my questions on item 12.1. In regards to 12.5, uh, question for the chief. Just just a general explanation of uh, what the unit action tells. I know that one of the concerns from the community has been that not too long ago we purchased another Ford, uh, also for for public safety, and maybe an explanation of what this unit will do for the community. Absolutely, and I brought Captain Dan Brenzik, who's been leading this project too, but the one important thing for this to understand is this is made for crisis communication. So I remember we have a dedicated hostage negotiation team, and they're working not just with hostage uh, circumstances, but those in a mental health crisis that may be facing a suicidal uh, situation that they're able to, and our trained hostage negotiators are able to use this to be able to do negotiations, and whether it be through phone calls, or we have throw phones that we can throw in there. So it's really a de-escalation tool but in no means is it going to be used in any type of like offensive in our community and I don't know if, if Captain Renzik wants to add anything to that from he's been working on this project yeah just to, to echo that really what it is it's a it's a sprinter sized van and it's a big communication tool so it's like a communication box so there's different modes of communication whether through computers through telephones through television sets which allow us to get real-time information and so really the point of it is just to allow us in one of these incidents when we're trying to safely resolve an incident to get as much information and communication as possible so we can make the best decisions uh, that we possibly can. I do appreciate the elaboration. Thank you both. Does that resolve the questions that were? Indeed it does. Thank you, Mayor. 
I, I do have a question, Councilman Alvarez. Is there some additional follow-up you would like to see from my office as it relates to complaints that are received from Sound Jones Hall? Well, no, now knowing that, that the information is being forwarded to you, uh, there are some some situations have been that have been made aware of that I definitely want to make known to you and see if those reports have been uh, including and if they have been addressed. So they're very general concerns and, and that I would love to meet with you in private and discuss them. Thank you. Uh, piggybacking on that, I was I had a request to come to Sam Jones, so I now have a tour that I'm going to Sam Jones again for to to look around because one of the residents did call me and ask me to come were, with nothing specific. Right. There were some rec recent concerns that were forwarded to our offices, um, but for confidentiality purposes, we were not privy to some information. But I will continue to follow up with each and every one of you to provide you some information on concerns that come through our come uh, regarding Sam Jones Hall. Thank you. Vice Mayor McDonald. Yes, sorry Megan, I should have asked the question when you were down here before. I just want to make sure for clarification purposes on item 12.17 that the red line items are making sure that there's absolutely no way that they can go over 8% over the next two years to raise any rent in the mobile home parks. I had to read it a couple of different times. It made more sense prior, but now that I've read it, I think three or four times, I'm just, I think I'm a little paranoid that I want to make sure that this language is absolutely clear that if a park um, raised rent 7% this year, next year they'd only be able to raise it 1% because it's no more than 8% over two years. I'm, I'm happy to take that on. Yes. Oh, sorry. I, is, I'm asking Megan, and I should have been asking City Attorney. So I apologize. We, both both um, uh, Director Bassinger and I have been very much involved in this, and what we were attempting to do was to clarify. I know there was some confusion at the um, introduction in terms of what that language was, um, and so it is the lesser of 8% would be the total between 23 and 24 cumulative increase, or the, if, if it's lower, then it's the 4% um, plus what's ever allowed this year in 2024 as an increase, which would be 70% of CPI, not to exceed 4%. What we were aware of is in monitoring where CPA, CPI is right now, that number is actually going to be lower than 8% likely. We won't know until August, until the August numbers come out, um, because it's 70% of CPI as of the August date, 12 month CPI. But that's why we have that the lesser of. So in no case can it be more than 8%, but the limit very well may be less than 8%. I guess, so that's still not clear to me on this dais right now. So I guess my question is, if it's 8%, that's over two years because yes. the cap for us is 4%. Yes. So this past year, we know that some parks raised it 5.9 or almost 6%. Isn't that right? 5.7. 5.7 was the 5 .7. CPI increase for 2023. And in the um, ordinance that is attached to tonight's agenda, it explicitly lays out that there's two options, the lesser of, so it's 4% plus the allowed CPI increase for 2024 or 8% of the rent that was charged in 2022. So we would look at that 2022 rent, apply 8%, and whichever is lower would be the rent allowed for 2024. Okay, I just wanna make sure that we're getting this right since it's come to us again that everybody's really clear from the mobile home parks as well that this is what we've been trying to achieve since the first adoption of the ordinance. We are we're doing our best to try and make this as clear as possible and we will be communicating with the residents and the Thank park you. management. I just got a, tom, a thumbs up from Tom, so I'm feeling confident now in my motion. Thank you. Because it is so difficult, is it possible to communicate with the residents, the management, and if we have the information for the owners so that there's no break in? 
communication. We, we are planning on doing uh, uh, outreach to all those groups as well as providing the information on our website. And then we also have staff who is available to assist in explaining with those residents. Thank you. And we will be providing in that information actual examples, taking in particular the 5.7 that some parks charged last, excuse me, for 2023. And we will give the example um, of with the CPI for 2024. So the actual we'll, math, the actual we'll math will be shown. Perfect. So, yes. Thank you so much. Bringing it back to council, are there any additional questions? Seeing none, I think, Madam City Clerk, we've given you a chance to get your breath, and we're <laughs> gonna ask you right now to do public comment. Thank you, Mayor. We are now taking public comment on item 12, the consent calendar. If you are in chamber and would like to comment but have not provided a speaker card or your name, please make your way to the podium. If you are participating via Zoom, please raise your hand or dial star nine. You will have three minutes and a countdown timer will alert at the end of that period. We received two public comment cards. The first speaker from council chamber will be Joanne, followed by Tom. Good afternoon, Mayor, Vice Mayor, and Council Members. That all sounds amazing and great to me. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, I, we, I just, I'm Joanne Jones from the country at Mobile Home Park, and um, Tom and I and Roger have been working on this for a long time. And we literally had nowhere, nowhere else to go, uh, you know, to have support and have um, people fight for us. And you have really come through. And so that, for that, we are exceptionally grateful. So thank you. I mean, a small, I know a small rent increase doesn't sound like much, but when you're on a fixed income, it's huge. And I mean, if you have a steady stream of income coming in, you don't feel it so much. But with you know a fixed income, you do. But anyways, I'm not gonna belabor it. I think Tom wants to talk about uh, something else, maybe uh, in-place transfers or uh, something else. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. The next public comment will be from Tom and then we'll move to our Zoom public comments. My name's Tom LaPena, and I'm the president of the Santa Rosa Manufactured Homeowners Association. First thing, you guys got it right. Damn, that was, that was an unbelievable presentation by the city attorney, Megan Basinger, who I'm probably driving crazy right about now with all of this. But it took some time, and, and you guys really got it right. But now I'm here to talk about more things. And what Petaluma did last night at their meeting, I, I watched it online and it was painful. It was a long time. They were apologizing to their citizens because it, they went on late too. But they do not have an in-place transfer, that 10% rent increase. They had had one before when there was an eviction or when a home was moved out of a park. They did away with that also. There are no in-place transfers in Petaluma. So they beat us on one count. I want us to be the best. I think I said that about our city manager at the last meeting. She is the best. The other thing is, one of their council members spoke remotely about the zoning overlay protection because now Youngstown Mobile Home Park, because they initiated the rent control ordinance revision, their owners want to change that park from senior to all age. We've got that right now in Carriage Court. They're trying to do that in Eddy's district. And we also have another park in Eddy's district, Sunset, that I called him about last week. He couldn't make it there, but I went there. And, and Evan Livingstone, an attorney in town here, was defending those residents. It's an all-age senior park of 55 homes, 
mostly Hispanic residents who are being taken advantage of and harassed, and it's not right. And we're going to see more of this because we're trying to fight for rent control and do what's right. S please stand with us. Stay with us. We, at, we looked like it was going to be done. At, ask you for it for next year's goal setting. The way these owners are moving, we got to get it done quicker to copy Petaluma and get everything in place or we're going to have a problem. Thank you very much. Thank you. Seeing no one else in council chamber wishing to provide public comment on this item, I'm going to turn it over to our Zoom host where we do have one hand being raised. Thank you. Margaret, you have your hand open soon. I've enabled your permissions. Go ahead whenever you're ready. Good evening, City Council and staff. Margaret Zamadio, Legal Aid of Sonoma County. Just speaking up to uh, say thank you for um, this consent calendar item to uh, finalize the amendments on the mobile home ordinance and um, you know I know Tom mentioned uh, fixes in the future and I've been speaking on a lot of mobile home ordinances lately Petaluma last night uh, went to the county today you know but I, I just want to thank you for being one of the first jurisdictions to pass much needed amendments and I look forward to uh, working with you in the future on further amendments to make sure that our most vulnerable seniors and community members are secure. Thank you. Thank you, Margaret. We have no other hands raised in Zoom. We do have one pre-recorded comment. I wish to have this comment played at the regular 4 p.m. City Council meeting of July 11th, 2023 on consent item 12.6, purchase of five replacement transit and paratransit cutaway vehicles. This is Gig Hideout, resident of Santa Rosa, also part-time city employee, but I am not on the clock working as I record this message, and I am not speaking on behalf of my department, IT Media. These are my own opinions. I hereby request that you pull item 12.6 from the consent calendar to discuss whether or not the new vehicles to be purchased run on electric powered, hybrid or gasoline fueled engines. The Santa Rosa Municipal Climate Action Plan calls for a transition away from fossil fuel engines and vehicles wherever alternative energy engines are feasible for the intended use of the vehicles. If this purchase plan is for electric or hybrid vehicles, that would be excellent and consistent with the city's climate action plan. But if the vehicles to be purchased will burn fuels that produce greenhouse gases, this purchase agreement should be canceled. Please pull and discuss item 12.6 and cancel the proposed purchase agreement if the vehicles are incompatible with the city's climate action plan. Thank you for your attention to this matter. And there are no other hands raised in Zoom. Okay. Um, inquiring minds do want to know, though, about 12.6. So is there someone here to answer the question about the vehicles that are being purchased? Lauren, uh, can you please promote uh, Yuri Kuslin? Hi. Oh, there's Rachel. And hurry to follow. Good afternoon, Mayor, members of council. Yes, I'm happy to answer that question. And I see I'm also being jo joined by Yuri Koslin. Um, these vehicles are gas powered vehicles. And I, I wanna take this back to our zero emissions bus rollout plan that the council recently approved. Um, as part of that rollout plan, we discussed some of the difficulties in transitioning specifically cutaway vehicles 
to electric at this point in time. There aren't uh, vehicles that are Altoona tested that have the battery size to meet the range requirements we have for our services um, uh, on a single charge. And, and so it's not feasible at, a, at this time for us to transition these cutaway vehicles to electric, but in the zero emissions bus rollout plan, we do lay out the time frame for that transition, and we will be re reviewing every cutaway um, and non-revenue vehicle order for opportunities to transition to electric from this point on and accelerate it as much as possible, much as we have done for the fixed route fleet, which as you all know, um, we're on a 100% zero emissions battery electric path at this point in time. So I'm, I'm hoping that answers the question, but uh, Yuri's here as well if there are additional follow-up questions. And Rachel, I'll just reiterate uh, just to say that we've delayed these purchases uh, in the hopes that we would be finding an electric vehicle because in reviewing the market, we believe that that, that was gonna be possible, but the more we dug into it, we realized that it's it's not just the range, but it's the time period the vehicles are out in the field. And we've we've interviewed other vendors and um, and and it's really our hope to get there, but the but the availability of vehicles that can that can do this range is is not is not available at this time. Thank you. Can you please explain to us what a cutaway vehicle is? Sure. It's it's uh, basically a vehicle where the back part of it has been removed, and then uh, and then there is a uh, that the seating has been put on to. It's, it's a it's a separate front from the from the. It's a separate front of the vehicle from the back of the vehicle, and so it's been uh, reconstructed uh, by the uh, manufacturer. Um, it's basically a small bus. What you see out in the field is a, is a, sm is a very small kind of neighborhood bus. It's what our paratransit uh, vehicles are out in the field. Thank both of you for coming on and explaining that to us. Are there any additional questions from council? Seeing none, Vice Mayor McDonald, may you please make a motion? Thank you, Mayor. I'd like to move item 12.1 through 12.9. Item 12.10 is pulled to a date uncertain. And then I'd like to move 12.11 through 12.17. And if I may, to clarify with the um, revisions to item 12.7 as announced. Yes, I meant to say that. I second. Thank you. We have a motion made by Vice Mayor McDonald and a second made by Council Member Alvarez. Madam City Clerk, may you please call the vote? Thank you. Council Member Stepp? Aye. Council Member Rogers? Aye. Council Member Okrepke? Aye. Council Member Fleming? Aye. Council Member Alvarez? Aye. Vice Mayor McDonald? Aye. Mayor Rogers? Aye. Let the record show the consent calendar passed unanimously. Thank you. We will now go on to item 13, our first uh, public comment on non-agenda items for the evening. Madam City Clerk. Thank you. We are now taking public comments on item 13, non-agenda matters. This is a time when any person may address the council on matters not listed on this agenda, but which are within the subject matter jurisdiction of the council. If you are in council chamber and would like to comment but have not yet provided a speaker card or your name, please make your way to the podium. If you are participating via Zoom, please raise your hand or dial star nine. You will have three minutes and a countdown timer will alert at the end of that period. We will take 12 speakers under item 13. If we have more than 12 public comments on item 13, the remaining speakers will be afforded the opportunity to speak on item 17 non-agenda matters to provide public comment. The first speaker will be Nathan, and then we'll move to Zoom or any other public commenters in the council chamber. Please go ahead, Nathan. Um, oh, there we go. Hi, um, <clears throat> my name's Nathan Coogan. Um, I've grown up in Sonoma County and have lived on uh, my property at Tanglewood Park uh, for the past 25 years. Uh, so my request here is probably pretty low on the totem pole, but um, what I am seeking is help with signage for dogs off leash. Um, I have been dealing with this issue for 
going on eight years now. Um, speaking with Lisa Grant, who was previous supervisor of uh, City Parks, and then um, Tim Finnegan, uh, supervisor of maintenance, and then also um, James Castro, who was here previously, um, left him a message today. Um, <clears throat> the long and short of it is that I have a large field in front of my home, which looks beautiful, and um, every time someone comes out there that wants to train their dog or let them run around off leash, I am also a dog owner. It becomes an issue. Um, they come and come up to the yard, come up to the fence, barking, etc. cetera. Um, the animal control folks, uh, Supervisor Kevin Davis, um, he's probably sick of me at this point for calling, you know, just about every time that this happens. So the long and short of it is that I have tried to remedy this uh, by visiting the departments, whether it be parks or animal control, um, directly. Everyone has said that there's no funds or um, solution. Um, so here I am to voice my opinion. And the signs that are there now are so dated, are vandalized or graffitied. Um, the only uh, uh, how should I say, the only uh, remnants of any signage that says dog off leash is something about the size of my coffee cup here that has a little dog with the, the leash thing on him. And people say that they don't see the, the signs, you know, if they don't see them, it doesn't apply. Um, that park in particular, there's about 10 different entrances and exits, so it's really, you know, the, there's a lot of places where there could be signs. Um, I'm running out of time here, but um, that's the gist of it. So um, here I am. Thanks a lot. Thank you, Nathan. See no one else in council chamber wishing to provide public comment. I'm going to turn it over to our Zoom host. Thank you, Dina. Eris, you're first up. I have allowed your or enabled your permissions. Go ahead and start whenever you're ready. Hi, thank you. Uh, this is Eris Weaver, Executive Director of the Sonoma County Bicycle Coalition. And I just wanted to give a thumbs up. Um, I just recently took a bike ride along the brand new um, two-way protected cycle track on Armory. And uh, more, please. Um, uh, it was the kind, this is the kind of project that I want to see the city doing more of, get it's not perfect, um, but getting something put in quickly that will help keep cyclists safer on the road is exactly the direction that we need to be going. I'd like to see similar things on some of our higher traffic, scarier roads, um, but I just wanted to give a thumbs up to um, moving in the right direction. Thanks. Thank you, Eris. We have no more hands raised in Zoom. Thank you. Eris? If, if I may, uh, Nathan, if you could just, during public comment, we can't get in a back and forth with people since it's not agendized, but if you can shoot me or one of my colleagues in the email, we can try to help you out. Okay. Um, that concludes our public comment on non-agenda matters. We have no report items, so we will go to item 15.1, which is our first public hearing of the evening. At this time, I will ask council if there are any ex parte disclosures that need to be made. Seeing none, Madam City Manager. Item 15.1 is a public hearing. Tierra de Rosa Appeal, um, EXT 22-0019.
Uh, good evening, Mayor and Council Members. I'll be presenting today for the Tierra de Rosa tentative map time extension. Um, this is formerly known as the Roseland Village Neighborhood Center, and this is the tentative map time extension for this project. This is also an appeal, and the file number is EXT22-0019, and the location is at 665 and 883 Sebastopol Road. The Tierra de Rosas project was approved to subdivide two, par two parcels of approximately 7.41 acres. Uh, this would be a mixed-use project with housing and some other elements such as a civic building, the marketplace, and a public plaza. Uh, this project has pretty extensive history. Uh, I'll be going over some of the more recent things. Um, on in February 2019, the Planning Commission approved the overall project and a density bonus. Um, and then following that approval, there was an appeal of that project and it came back again for an approval with the City Council on June 2019. And then in September 2020, there was an assembly bill that helped extend the project date to when they needed a file for a final map. And then in December 2022, the applicant submitted an application for an extension of their tentative map. On March 23, 2023, this year, the Planning Commission approved the one-time, one-year one-time extension of the tentative map. And on March 30th, we received an appeal and that was filed with the city clerk. And this appeal is regarding the circulation and parking agreement with the Easterly Neighborly property. Um, before the city council today is the one-year time extension appeal and the extended expiration would be from December 25th, 2022 last year to December 25th, 2023, which is this year. Um, some b overview about the project. So there are several elements going on. Um, there is the three to four story apartment buildings. Uh, currently, recently approved was Casa Roseland. Um, that is a, that was a low in, yeah, low income project for housing and that was 75 units. And then they're currently in a design review phase for the public plaza. Um, previously on this, currently on this site is the Matote Food Park and they're working on the next phase which is for the public park. Um, then the next phases include the Mercado which would be a grocery store and then the civic building which would contain the public library and some meeting rooms. Um, here's the project site located in Roseland. The general plan designation for this site is medium residential and retail medium, sorry, medium residential and retail medium residential. Um, the zoning is R318 and CG, which is general commercial. Um, and this is also in the Roseland area and Sebastopol Road specific plan. A tentative, this is the proposed and approved tentative map that the extension is going for. And you can see all of the lots that are being created in this process. Uh, lot one and two are for housing. Three is for the civic building. Parcel A is for the park and parcel four, sorry, lot four is for the market. I'm going now over for the appeal statement. Um, so the project, the appeal statement is the project violates a recorded easement for the parking and circulation. Um, going over some brief history on this project, it was built the, as the Roseland Village Shopping Center in 1954, and they recorded a grant of reciprocal easement on September 12, 1956. Um, at this time, the parcel had... The parcel was originally constructed with the building straddling across the property, and there was an easement that actually now has the CDC property. The CDC property um, is in, almost entirely within this easement, and once once was, de was once developed with five buildings. And on the other side is the, uh, Mr. Paulson's property, and he has two buildings on that site that are within the easement, and he has other buildings and property on that area. some more looking into the appeal process. Um, the easement grants reciprocal rights to driveway and parking which presently exist or will be developed hereafter. Um, this base is stating that it is 
it for, foresaw there would be development on this site and there are no specific language regarding parking spaces or circulation rather than just access on the site. Um, there is no restriction on the land use on this site as well and is not stated in the easement. This, the subdivision also will maintain a circulation piece to it as well between the two properties. Um, at this time, there's also a pending appeal judgment with the Sonoma County Council, and they are currently uh, drafting briefs about this appeal at that level. For uh, going over the California Environmental Quality Act for this project, um, this project falls within the Roseland Area and Sebastopol, Sebastopol Road Specific Plan, which was adopted and certified in November 2016. Um, they have exemptions over under CEQA guidelines 15162, under which uh, there, if there are no changes to the project, there would be no further environmental review required. And uh, some similar languages under CEQA guidelines 15182 and government code 65457, in which there is an EIR prepared for the project. It is recommended by the Planning and Economic Development Department that the City Council deny the appeal and affirm the Planning Commission's action by approving the one-year time extension for the Tierra de Rosa's tentative map, extending the expiration date to December 25th, 2023. Um, here is my information if there are any questions. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any questions from Council members? Seeing none, we would like to invite Planning Commission Board Chair Karen Weeks. Hi, can you hear me? Yes, we can. Thank you, Mayor. Um, Mayor Rogers and members of the council, as stated, uh, my name is Karen Weeks and I'm chair of the Planning Commission. I'm here today to give you a very brief overview of our action as it relates to this item. As stated by the planner on March 23rd, 2023, we reviewed this item and we unanimously approved the tentative map time extension. It was a standard tentative map extension and there were no concerns by the commission. It was basically, uh, in our view, a housekeeping item. Our role, as you know, is to carry out California planning and zoning laws within the city of Santa Rosa, which includes implementation of ordinances and policies relating to land use matters. At the time of the public hearing, uh, we heard from one member of the public uh, who is the appellant or which was the appellant. Um, and that was uh, all that we heard from the public. Um, and I'm happy to answer any questions uh, if you have them. Thank you, Chair Weeks. Are there any questions for Chair Weeks? Seeing none, thank you very much. We thank do, you. Thank you. We do not have a presentation from the applicant, so we will now ask the appellant to come forward with their presentation. I'm here. I'm up here. Do you want me to come down there or up here, ma'am? Oh, up there. I can just see you down here. You want me down there? No, no, no. You can stay there, but I can see you down here. That's okay. why I'm looking this way. Thank you. Shall I start? Yes, sir. Can you hear me okay? Yes, sir. Okay. Mayor, Vice Mayor, members of the City Council, my name is John Paulson. I'm the owner of the Roseland Village Shopping Center which is located to the east of the CDC Midpen property. I'm here appealing the Midpen tentative map extension approved by the Planning Commission. In fact, I've attended all of the CDC Midpen steering community meetings, planning and city council meetings, as well as Sonoma County Board of Supervisors meetings where, a vice, where I voiced my opinion to the CDC Midpen's plans and tentative maps. These plans ignore and destroy my property and more importantly, my tenants' historical and recorded easement rights to have their patients, patrons park on the CDC parking area, 272 spaces. All of my concerns have been ignored by the CDC 
and Midpen building of affordable housing, which will eliminate the recorded easement and access to the 272 parking spaces. On the CDC property as well as they're gonna, it's gonna eliminate the traffic circulation. All shopping centers to survive, Cottingtown, the downtown, they all have parking. This, pr this plan will eliminate all the parking. Thus, if this plan is approved, it will destroy the 14 Hispanic and minority businesses that rent from me. Who cares? Apparently the city, CDC and Midpen don't. Midpen's own traffic study clearly states that there won't be enough parking spaces on their site just for what has been approved on their tentative map, not taking into consideration my easement for, for my tenant's needs. Their tentative map even gives away land that I have a parking easement over to the city of Santa Rosa for city streets. Do recording easements matter? Does a deed for your house matter? When you have a deed for your house and the city comes or the CDC or the county comes and says your deed isn't any good, would you be up here like I am? When you are mid-pen and the city of Santa Rosa can just run you over and destroy anyone in their way. Additionally, mid-pen's plans of market rate apartments, I believe it's on parcel two, will eliminate the circulation of truck access, fire and emergency access through the rear of my property. This access is necessary for deliveries to the food market and other businesses just like any other shopping center that take deliveries of goods and supplies at the back of their store. I would like the city council members to step into my shoes for just a minute. I'll give you a little history. Just imagine, city council members, before you were born, your parents started assembling a total of 12 acres that would become the site of the future Roseland Village Shopping Center, the first shopping center in Sonoma County. Not having enough money to build a shopping center, your father sold seven acres to Hugh Cotting at a huge discount with the agreement that Cotting would build an anchor tenant, Pam Market, and other buildings, pave the seven acres, create 272 parking spaces that would be used by both your father and Cotting, their tenants and customers of the shopping center to be mutually beneficial, beneficial to both. Additionally, Cotting and your father agreed to this arrangement and signed and recorded an easement so that the parking and traffic circulation that was established by the buildings that were built have to have remained in the same location since the 50s, 1950s, until the CDC demolished most of them. And there is a restriction in this recorded easement, by the way. It states that the shopping center will remain a shopping center, quote, unquote. Our property has not changed ownership, my family's property, while the Codding seven acres has changed hands. Each owner has honored the recorded easement. In fact, prior to the CDC's purchasing the property, the lease, their leases even stated that their tenants would not violate the recorded easements. When the CDC was in escrow to purchase a property, Kathleen Kane acknowledged and initialed on the preliminary title report the easement stating Paulson's parking. Yet the CDC and Midpen ignored and pushed ahead, wasted a lot of money and with the city of Santa Rosa blessing these plans. Yes, if you uphold the Planning Commission's extension of CDC Midpen's tentative map, you will be destroying 14 Hispanic and minority businesses that have thrived and relied on parking for their customers. Midpen's plans need to change. I'm not opposed to affordable housing. I'm opposed to the CDC and Midpen running over and ignoring property owners' recorded easements. Property owners have rights too, just like you all do. City council members, your vote affects me and my tenants. Don't kid yourselves. 
Someday, a county or a city could do this to you and your property. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any questions for the appellant? Councilmember Krupke? Yeah, um, for the city attorney, just to clarify, um, we are not voting on any merits of the project. We're not voting on easements. We're not voting on design. We're just voting to uphold an extended, a, a, the extension of a map that was approved by planning commission in 2019 as well as held by the, uh, held by the city council in 2019. Is that correct? That is correct. Thank you. Council member Alvarez. And, and this is a question for you, Mr. Paulson. Uh, I'm very aware of, of how much respect you have from your tenants, as I know them all. Uh, my question to you is what has, I believe there's been purchase offers in the past. Am I correct, sir? <laughs> yes, there have been. And I imagine that they have not been sufficient as have been the issue with the offers. Let me tell you about the first offer from Ben Wickham from the CDC. Ben Wickham was the uh, fellow hired from Portland to come down and ramrod this project. And he realized quite quickly that, and he knew that the project was going to violate my easements, wipe out my parking, and wipe out all my tenants' businesses. But he had to push for this, for affordable housing. That's why he was there. So he called me to a meeting and he said, and by the way, thank you for asking. He called me to a meeting, he brought some documents and he said that he wanted me to sign, giving up my easement in exchange for $50,000. Mr. Wickham stated at that meeting, and I quote, John, do you think any judge in Sonoma County would side with you over affordable housing? You'd better take the 50,000 because you will lose in Sonoma County Court and it will cost you 50,000 to lose. And that is when I filed my lawsuit. The judge, the Sonoma County judge ruled against me incorrectly and I'm appealing that ruling and it's costing a lot of money, but it's, this is wrong. I appreciate the elaboration, sir, for, for myself. I've been wanting to speak with you for a while, but I wanted to be in public so all information can be heard by all, including our conversation, so I do appreciate it. I do understand that this voting will be simply for the uh, extension of the tentative map. Uh, and, and moving forward, I hope that some dialogue can continue between yourself and the city of Santa Rosa to see how we mediate the issue as really the center itself is the heart of Roseland and is really the heart of Southwest Santa Rosa. So I see how important coming to terms is for all parties involved. Thank you. Are there any additional questions for the appellant? Are there any questions for the applicant who is available for questions? All right, seeing none. We will now open the public hearing. Madam City Clerk, can you please facilitate? Thank you, we are now taking public comments on item 15.1. If you're in council chamber and would like to comment but have not provided a speaker card and you're not required to provide a speaker card or your name, please make your way to the podium. If you are participating via Zoom, please raise your hand or dial star nine. You will have three minutes and a countdown timer will alert at the end of that period. Looks like we do have a person at the podium. If you would like, please identify yourself for public record and begin your comment. My name is Robert Nellison. In 1980, I was working in the Secretary of the Navy's Washington, D.C. Office Legal Department and received a brutally rapid lesson in real politic. All government institutions and managerial employees have a deeply entrenched survival motive. Managers gain power and money and advancement, not by telling the truth, but by increasing their budget and number of subordinates. There is rarely any adverse consequence to lying. You could simply rule against the application. You have the power. For Roseland, there was a housing plan proposed by Mission Housing that would have allowed construction to have begun in 2016. The 
The current mid-pen plan guarantees that first, construction will be delayed interminably, and two, the county and its partner, the city of Santa Rosa, will create a hellhole of never-ending problems if the mid-pen design is ever built. When I came to Roseland in 1983, 40 years ago, before many of you fiduciaries of the public trust came to Santa Rosa, and your minions who play with City of Santa Rosa property owner taxes like monopoly money could not balance a personal checkbook. Roseland Village was a vibrant working family community center. The, the county's and city's insistence on cramming the maximum number of low-income people of color into a minimum square footage residences with inadequate parking by their own traffic study rings hollow. It is a racist agenda. When I sued Lanahan and Riley in 2010 and asked a press Democrat to report the jury trial, I was told directly, Lanahan and Riley buys considerable press Democrat advertising. We will not criticize it in any manner. So the theft of millions of dollars in clients' funds, gross breach of fiduciary duty, and non-payment of employees' wages continued for years. The same rules apply, according to the press Democrat, for the city and county of San Francisco. The fourth estate here has no concept of its privileged duty as it endorses a fascist dishonesty of the city and county. You need to take account in, into the, that the county bought the ball cutting property knowing of massive soil underground contamination. When Matodi began sewer excavation, I could smell the, the hydrocarbons everywhere. The Regional Water Quality Control Board has no record of proper testing before or during soil transport. This means someone is in violation of federal law. The Regional Water Quality Board is aware of contamination at high level. So, being forced to conclude, um, the, the city and county and the city of Santa Rosa. Thank you, sir. I think that your time has, has expired. Thank you so much did for your Mr. comment. Did Mr. Paulson have any time left over on his 10 minutes? I'm his attorney. Sir, thank you. Your public comment time has expired. Thank you very much. Thank you. Seeing no additional public comments in council chamber, we'll move to, I'll turn it over to the Zoom host where we do have hands raised. Thank you. Satnam, you're up first, followed by Ramon. I've enabled your permission, Satnam. Go ahead and start whenever you're ready. Hi, can you hear me? Yes, we can. Hi, my name is uh, Satnam Singh. I'm the property owner at uh, 921 Sebastopol Road. We're a uh, unbranded local community gas station um, in the Roseland community. Uh, I wanted to stress upon uh, the importance of parking that Mr. Paulson has uh, implemented. Um, parking in the Roseland Village is uh, congested and crowded already. Um, and public easements like this are, um, in my opinion, are only going to make it more difficult. Um, my first example is the Boys and Girls Club that was recently built in our community. I uh, borderline that uh, building. Uh, if you were to just come here at 5 p.m., 4 p.m., and just walk along and seeing uh, where the parents are parking and how difficult it is for them to find parking, and if they do find parking, uh, where are they parking? Uh, majority of them are even parking on my own business property. I've talked to the Boys and Girls Club. They, they really don't have a solution for this. And going forward uh, to extend a, a map, a tentative map for a project where they're already taking up public parking for local businesses, I think it's going to be a major issue. Second of all, I would like to also stress upon uh, the current businesses that are already here. Um, so we're currently building infrastructure in a um, community where there's already buildings. Yes, they're quite old buildings, but there are businesses here. I have underground storage tanks uh, that uh, get fuel deliveries and those come in large trucks. And uh, Street D is going to 
probably going to make it really difficult for my fuel deliveries to come in. Uh, so I just wanted to provide a couple more examples of how parking uh, for current businesses uh, who've been here for a long time and if we're going to build housing, how parking and uh, how local businesses will run, uh, there might be some difficulties. That's it. Thank you. Thank you. Next up, we have Ramon, followed by Joshua. Ramon, I've enabled your permissions. Go ahead whenever you're ready. Yes, uh, good afternoon. Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you, Ramon. Okay. Thank you very much, uh, City Council, Mayor, everybody who's here today. Uh, my colleague, Josh uh, Shipper, is going to be talking from generational housing point of view, but I want to talk my personal uh, experience with this uh, parcel. I started studying urban planning back in 2000, and in my environmental impact review class, we did uh, a mock uh, report on, on this particular um, piece of property. So I'm talking about 21 years ago that we were already slowing down the process on building any housing on this property. I just wanted to, to state that, that, that even back then, there were people that had been waiting for a long time. And we are behind in our housing production. I just want to say thank you for keeping this moving forward. Um, things are not always perfect. We're gonna find ways to coexist and to have a good community, but we need housing today. And I just wanted to reiterate, 21, 22 years ago is that I'm talking about that we were doing environmental impact review on this property and still we haven't started building housing. Thank you very much and I really appreciate you all. Thank you, Ramon. Up next we have Joshua followed by Margaret. Joshua, I've enabled your permissions. Go ahead whenever you're ready. Uh, great, thanks so much. Um, good evening, Mayor Rogers, uh, Vice Mayor McDonald, council members and staff. Uh, again, my name is Josh Shipper with Generation Housing. We primarily wanna thank you in advance for your consideration of support for the Tierra de Rosas project. By upholding the Planning Commission's recommendation, we really think you can demonstrate your commitment to the longer term goals of more and more affordable housing for all Santa Rosans. Um, as, as my colleague Ramon just mentioned, uh, we know it's been a, a very long road and a lot has been asked of you for a project that started in a sort of formal application status in 2019, but has really been in the works for more than 20 years. It's met with a number of delays, but we would not be close to its initiation and, and in its current form without the guidance of the council at each stage, uh, preserving that total of 75 new affordable apartments complete with access to a variety of on-site services has required that the council at each stage has preserved the site for development, kept the project on track, and ultimately fulfilled the promise to the residents of, of Roseland. Um, I, I, I will, I'll echo my colleague uh, uh, Ramon and just pass along how important historically this project has been to the community of Roseland. It was envisioned by the community, designed to be used by the community. Um, and in order to remake a site that was impacted by environmental injustice. So uh, for the people of Rosen, this, this parcel has been a promise for several decades in the making. They've been asked to participate in planning uh, in terms of what the community would look like, and they participated in kind. They've been patient, and, and today we, we, we see this as taking another step forward. So we are primarily here to celebrate this project and where it's at today, and we thank you for your continued efforts to see this project through. Thanks so much. Thank you, Joshua. Up next, we have Margaret, followed by Eris. Margaret, I've enabled your permissions. Go ahead whenever you're ready. Hello again, Margaret Zamadio here uh, with Legal Aid of Sonoma County. Uh, I just wanted to stay on for this. I think it's super important for a community that is so needed. Uh, a community project like this that's so needed that the community itself has had so much uh, input on. It's rare. Um, and we are in the age of housing element and we are in the age of 
you know, a housing crisis in which we need to be um, focusing on affordable housing production. And this this project goes, you know, well beyond that. So I want to lift up the comments of Ramon and Joshua. And, you know, I heard I heard the business owners earlier and, you know, I can understand, um, you know, their their frustration. But as Ramon said, nothing is going to be perfect. You know, we're not going to be able to make everyone happy um, when we're when we're building housing. Um, that's why it's taking so long. <laughs> um, but I'm sure that the city and the community is going to be able to find a way to um, to solve that problem. You know, um, and so I hope that you will. Uh, take your staff recommendation and deny the appeal and just let this project move forward. And uh, thank you for your work. Thank you, Margaret. Next up, we have Eris and no other hands up. Eris, I've enabled your permissions. Go ahead whenever you're ready. All right, thank you. Um, I hadn't intended to speak about this item, but, but listening to um, all of the conversation, I wanna echo, uh, the previous uh, three speakers and add my own hit on this. Any project anywhere, whether it's a housing project, whether it's uh, a new bicycle lane, whether it's any any sort of improvement to make our um, our streets and our communities safer and more connected, the main complaint that always comes up is parking, is there's not enough parking. We need more parking, we need more parking. Folks, the automotive paradigm is on its way out. If we are ever going to meet all of our climate action goals, if we're going to meet our Vision Zero goals, we have to d change our city in a way that gets people out of their cars and uses other forms of transportation. That's going to mean better bike lanes, better public transit, lots of other stuff. Um, and so the I don't know, complaints about parking uh, uh, don't quite ever fall very friendly on my ears around that. In about an hour, 200 cyclists are going to um, uh, descend upon Mitote Food Park with the Taco Tuesday to uh, spend money and eat and have a good time. And I invite uh, folks to get out there and look at the joy coming down the road. And if we want to remake a neighborhood, that's the way to do it. Thanks. Thank you, Aaron. We have no other hands in Zoom. Thank you, Mayor. That concludes public comments on this item. Thank you. We'll now close the public hearing, bringing it back to council. Are there any questions of the applicant, appellant, staff? Vice Mayor McDonald. Thank you. Um, I just have a quick question for staff. I know that there was a traffic report done and it, it very well could be that in the 94 pages, I didn't see it, but can you give me a percentage of how much the parking lot is full at any given time or during regular business hours? Is it 50% full or where are we at? And then um, how much would this reduce parking in those businesses? Just so that I'm aware. Uh, thank you, Vice Mayor, for the question. I don't have that information. I can pull up the traffic study and review it, um, but um, I don't have the answer. I, I'm not sure how it may have analyzed the parking um, on the site that would be impacted um, from Mr. Paulson's property. So I'd, I'd have to take some time to take a look at that to see if we have that information. Thank you. Thank you. Council Member Rogers? Is now the appropriate time for comments also, or are you just looking for questions? Uh, I'm looking for questions. Okay, I'll wait. Thank you. We'll do comments after uh, Council Member Alvarez has an opportunity to put a motion. Council Member Alvarez. Thank you, Madam Mayor. I'd like to make a uh, 
present a resolution of the Council of the City of Santa Rosa denying an appeal and upholding the decision of the Planning Commission approving a one-year extension of time for the tentative map for the Tierra de Rosas, formerly known as Roseland Village Neighborhood Center subdivision located at 665 and 883 Sebastopol Road. Accessible parcel number 125-111-037 and 125-101-039. File number uh, EXT22-0019 and waive further reading of the text. Second. We have a motion made by Council Member Alvarez and seconded by Council Member Fleming. Is there any discussion or comments? Council Member Rogers. Yeah, I, I probably should just let it go, but I'll, I wanted to make a quick comment that in my seven years on council, I have never had an attorney stand up and say that the city has a racist agenda because they don't understand state housing law. So I hope you're not paying for that representation, Mr. Paulson, because that's appalling to me. I was very proud to vote for this project once. I'll be proud to vote again. And if it comes to us again, which it sounds like every opportunity it'll come forward, I imagine I'll probably be voting for it at that point as well. Madam City Clerk, may you please call the vote. Thank you, Mayor. Council Member Stapp? Aye. Council Member Rogers? Aye. Council Member Okrepke? Aye. Council Member Fleming? Aye. Council Member Alvarez? Aye. Vice Mayor McDonald? Aye. Mayor Rogers? Aye. Let the record show this item passes with seven affirmative votes. Thank you. Moving on to item 15.2, which is our second public hearing of the evening. Madam City Manager? Item 15.2 is a public hearing, a resolution of necessity for the acquisition of eminent domain of temporary easement and fee symbol interest in portions of real property commonly known as 1975 Cleveland, A Cleveland Avenue, APN 012-490-0019. For the Highway 101 Bicycle and Pedestrian Overcrossing Project. And if the team could introduce themselves for the record, thank you. Good evening, Council. I'm Jill Scott, the city's real estate manager, and I have with me Adam Abel, our city attorney. Assistant city, city attorney. attorney, excuse me. <laughs> I believe we need a comment from the city clerk first. Thank you. I will note for the record that a proof of mailing of the notice of the hearing to the affected property owners were mailed on 614 or June 14th, 2023 and again on June 20th, 2023. It's Good evening, Mayor Rogers, Vice Mayor McDonald, and Council Members. Um, as you know, my name is Adam Abel. My role here today as legal is to respectfully outline for you the issues to be addressed at this resolution of necessity hearing and what you will be asked to consider pursuant to the California Government Code and the Eminent Domain Act. And those issues are threefold. One, whether the public interest in necessity require the proposed project. Two, whether the proposed project is planned or located in the manner that will be most compatible with the greatest public good and least private injury. And finally, whether the real property described in the resolution is necessary for the proposed project. And with that introduction, Jill Scott will now address those issues through her PowerPoint presentation. Okay, so we're here tonight to talk about the Highway 1 Bicycle and Pedestrian Overcrossing Project and the resolution of, uh, for consideration for Council for the Resolution of Necessity Hearing. So there's multiple areas um, where the city would need to acquire right away or property. Tonight we're only asking you to consider one property um, that we need right away. The others um, we're working with and in the process of acquiring. Um, the property is owned by the Michael and Ellen Hornstein Revolution trust and it's located at 1975 Cleveland Avenue. 
So the project itself um, is, of course, in line with council goals to maintain um, sustainable infrastructure. And it's because it does cross, it's a, a bike and ped overcrossing, crossing in the north of Santa Rosa over US 101. Um, it crosses a state highway. So it is a Caltrans oversight project. Um, and you'll see in a moment why that's an important point. So there, as Adam described, there are several reasons, several things that council needs to consider tonight to see if you want to um, pass this resolution of necessity. One of those is the public interest and necessity of the project. So the project was um, came forward to provide safe access to bicycle and pedestrian use in the areas east and west of Highway 1 and in the northern half of Santa Rosa. So right now, Steel Lane and College are the, the only crossings um, of 101 in the area, so there's about a three mile gap, which is considered to be too far for pedestrians and too far by public comment for most cyclists. Um, pedestrian and vehicle conflicts um, points need to be reduced, and also we're looking to um, alternative modes of travel to be provided to alleviate travel congestion on 101 and on the side streets. So that was the point of looking at first looking at this crossing. Um, not building this project would allow these challenging crossing conditions to persist and sometimes um, dangerously persist um, while failing to encourage a mode shift away from looking at uh, you know, non-motorized forms of transportation. The next is the project location, and this is an important, uh, important point for council to consider. Um, several locations were looked at in this study. So Caltrans, because this was, again, a state crossing, and why um, and Caltrans performed the study. And so we'll talk about the study throughout the project, throughout the PowerPoint. And this was the initial study done with the mitigated negative declaration, which is the environmental. And so this was completed by Caltrans, California Transportation Authority. Um, and there were multiple locations looked at. In 2020, they put together a project development team, which they call a PDT. The PDT consisted of staff from Caltrans, from the city, from Sonoma County Transportation Authority, from the city of Santa Rosa, and then the city of Santa Rosa consultants. So the city had gone out with an RFP and hired BKF consultants for design and engineering and also associate right-of-way services to do, uh, was a sub-consultant of them to do the right-of-way work. Um, this was the PDD team that looked at all of these different um, locations. So it was very important to get this right. So they they considered all of the factors within the study. Um, so they did, um, the relevant factors that they looked at definitely included all of the public comment that was put in during the study. So, when the PDT got together, um, this is going back in history, so we had to talk to some people that were um, included in this uh, in, a, in a while because this predated some of us. Um, some of the locations that they looked at would just no longer be viable or, or they found for a lot of reasons weren't viable. And they wanted to triple check this, make sure that this was the viable location, the preferred location that came out, which is the Elliott, um, this one right here that we're gonna talk about tonight, the Edwards and Elliott location. The other location that they decide to look at just to triple check that could potentially be viable is called Bear Cub Way, and it's this long one right here. It's further south on 101. So when when they looked at this during the study, and this is going back, I think, like 2011 or maybe even sooner, they hadn't made the decision on where the smart station was going to be at that time. They were looking at different locations. One of the locations, I believe, was somewhere around Range Avenue down here, which would have made Bear Cub Way a, a more viable location. So pedestrians and bicyclists could have come off of here and gone down to Range Avenue and been at the smart station. Smart ended up building, uh, chose the Guerneville Road location, which makes Bear Cub Way really not viable. It makes the project not viable, really. I mean, it's a really long shot. It makes Elliott very close for pedestrians and for, bi and for bicyclists. So we put together from the PDT findings from the study, we put together a side by side because one of the, as Adam explained, one of the important things that you need to look at tonight to consider this is 
was the location looked at for the greatest public good and the least private injury? So the PDT um, looked at Edwards um, at the time when they looked at this on both sides of the road, um, of both sides of the landing, um, about 8,800 square feet of right of way was needed from the private sector. So the city would need to purchase that from the private sector. Um, the Bear Cub Way is, a, is substantially more, 26,000 square feet. Um, Edwards Way was a lower construction cost versus Bear Cub Way, which is a higher construction cost. The Edwards Elliott location um, is not considered, they're not expecting to have impacts to the parking lot or the layouts of the pedestrian circulation on the landing spots. Um, on the Bear Cub Way, there was expected the loss of 47 parking spots to two businesses. Um, Edwards was closer to the smart station, as I spoke to before. Um, public perception and the comments in the in the um, ISMND, the study, was that um, the Bear Cub Way was far too it was too far for pedestrians, especially, but most bicyclists from the smart station. Um, the Elliott Edwards perception was perceived by the public to be much closer to public amenities such as Cottingtown shopping, restaurants. Um, they also perceived it to be more active pedestrian area, um, so they thought it would get more use. And the JC preferred area, um, preferred Edwards, uh, San Rosa Junior Cars preferred Edwards Elliott location over the Bear Club location because of the housing, the location of the new housing facility, which now they've built. Um, they also had, um, JC also had concerns at the time, according to the report, um, of the landing of the Bear Cub Way because it was right next to a child care facility and it was a lot of traffic. Um, in the report, they, um, it, the owners of what were 1975 Cleveland, who are speaking about tonight, and some of the residents on Edwards Avenue um, did speak up and did make comments that they w did not like. They thought there would be additional traffic. They didn't want the landing strip there. They really wanted the Bear Cub Way. Um, and those comments were reviewed by the, they were considered and reviewed by the PDT, by this committee. And in some cases, or in a lot of cases, they put a voice and minimization efforts, so sort of, mitig sort of kind of mitigate mitigation efforts into place in the in the actual project itself and the design of the project, which I'll show you a few um, as we go through the presentation to kind of address those concerns. So the next, um, again, as I said before, the preferred location on Edwards and Elliott um, provides direct connections between commercial areas on the west and Santa Rosa Junior College and residential areas on the east, direct connections to Smart Corridor, along existing bike and pedestrian friendly streets. And that's just uh, shows you a little bit about where it is on the north end of 101. So a little bit about the subject property itself, um, 1975 Cleveland Avenue. It's improved with commercial leased buildings, and you'll know those as Dick's Sporting Goods and Patelco Credit Union. Um, the total property size um, highlighted in blue on your PowerPoint is 3.56 acres or 155,000 square feet. We are requesting to purchase a total of 709 square feet of that 155,000. It's a very small amount. The temporary construction easement that we'll need for the contractor during construction is a little less than 3,500 3, square feet, which would just be used, like I said, during construction and then um, vacated and given back to um, the owners. And I apologize, this slide is a little bit blurry, but we wanted to show you this because it kind of gives you a little bit of an idea. This is uh, where these kind of parking spaces are right here. This is the side of the Dick Sporting Goods leased building. The purplish pink colored right here is the TCE that we need, the temporary construction easement, the 3,500 square feet. And then this very tiny turquoise area is the actual acquisition of property that the city would need. Now, most of the landing strip and the whole 
overpass and bridge is going to be built within city right away. My understanding from the engineers, again, I'm not an engineer and they are here tonight if we have more questions, um, but my understanding from the design team and the engineers is that they tried very hard to keep this completely in city right away, but because of regulations and the skew of the bridge coming over from the east side, there's only a certain amount of skew that's allowed, and this is the maximum amount of skew, and so they did have to do a take of 709 square feet. Um, here is a picture of the subject property now. That's the side of the Dick's Sporting Goods and that is looking um, east on Edwards Avenue and that's looking towards Patelco, Cleveland, US 101. That's what it looks like right now. All that sidewalk strip is all city right away and that's where the majority of the bridge would be built. This is a schematic of what um, what it would look like um, and the landing strip right there and then right along where the trees are is the tiny little strip, the 709 square feet that the city would need um, to construct it. This is the view along Edwards toward Cleveland so you can see what it would look like underneath the bridge. There'd still be a walking path and a sidewalk. And then this slide is important because it shows the measures, a lot of the measures that Caltrans and the city have gone to in the design and the design consultant to try to meet the needs and safety and think about safety in this project of where the landing strip comes down here. So um, originally, right on this, uh, I, if I can get this mouse going, right here, um, where it's kind of built up, there were openings right here originally where bike or pedestrians could get through and go into the Dick's Sporting Goods parking lot. Um, that was requested to be changed, so they, they changed that. Um, they put in a larger landing area, mode separators, safety lighting, um, new crosswalk here, they have these sharrows, they're called right here to show, and new signage to show the bikes and the pedestrians where the mode of travel is so that they're not taking them into the private property, they're taking them onto the roads or the, or the public right away. Um, and so that was all done um, in keeping in mind and trying to uh, think of the public or the private property owners. So as far as the negotiations with um, the, the Hornsteins or their um, legal counsel, there has been negotiations. There have been phone calls, site visits, emails, and at this time we've been unable to reach an agreement. Um, this is a little bit of the negotiation timeline back in August. Um, these are all uh, legally what needs to be done. Um, and back in August, we had we um, gave them a notice of decision to appraise to the property owner. In September, the property owner accompanied the original appraiser during the inspection. In October, um, there were some changes made from that inspection to the exhibits, and the we got uh, revised land areas. In November, we got the original original appraiser, appraisal. Um, an offer was made in December to the property owner, um, from the city to the property owner, and then in February, um, the property owner's council sent a counter offer. They decided to get their own appraisal. Um, they sent a counter offer to the city based on their new appraisal obtained by the property owner. Um, it was far apart, this, this hearing isn't about that, but um, the city has decided to obtain another appraisal, a, a non-biased form of opinion, um, to look at that but at this point we are pretty far apart. Our legal counsel and their legal counsel are working through that. We do want to make every attempt to try and negotiate this, but because there is a timeline for construction on this, we don't want this to hold up the project construction. So we're coming, staff is coming to you and asking you to consider this resolution of necessity so that if we cannot negotiate um, a resolution to this and an offer and a purchase that we, can move forward with the actual action um, for eminent domain. And that is the rest of the presentation um, from staff. We have everyone here. If you have any questions, um, we're available. Thank you for that presentation. Are there any questions from council members? Council member Alvarez? I think it's a great project, first and foremost. Uh, is there any, any 
ideas of like graffiti mitigation, maybe the application of paint to the sides of this beautiful structure so it's not tagged in the future or anything of that nature? We'll have to have Lisa Welsh answer that question. She's the project manager. It's very beautiful and I want it to stay like that. Thank you, Mayor and Vice Mayor and Council. Uh, Lisa Welsh, uh, Supervising Engineer in uh, Capital Projects. Um, so related to the, it's, there's an anti-graffiti paint that will go on it uh, and apply, it to, apply to it. We, there's, um, that's the solution this time. Very great to hear, thank you. Are there any additional questions from Council? Seeing none, we will now open the public hearing. Madam City Clerk, may you please conduct the public hearing. Thank you. We are now taking public comment on items 15.2. If you are in the council chamber and would like to provide public comment but have not provided a speaker card, please make your way to the podium. Again, you are not required to submit a speaker card. If you are participating via Zoom, please raise your hand or dial star nine. You will have three minutes and a countdown timer will alert at the end of that period. See no one approach the podium for public comment in chamber. I'm going to turn it over to our Zoom host for uh, Zoom public comments. Thank you, Eris. I have allowed your permission, so you can go ahead whenever you're ready. Thank you. Um, this is uh, Eris Weaver with the Sonoma County Bicycle Coalition. It has been decades getting this project built and it is so necessary for bicycles and pedestrians to be able to safely get across the freeway from um, the east to the west. Uh, looking at the uh, maps that were just shared, the amount of uh, right-of-way that's being requested from the property is so small uh, along the edge um, that uh, I urge the city to move forward with this. Um, I did see in the uh, documents online a letter from the um, uh, owner's attorneys uh, where, in which it multiple times said that this location was going to uh, pose a, a hazard to cyclists and pedestrians, which is a little uh, disingenuous, uh, disin I can't pronounce the word. Um, given that the bike coalition and other community organizations have been uh, preferring this alignment and waiting for this project to get built um, because we think it will increase safety for for their attorneys to say in their letter that oh no it's going to cause more injuries um is is really ludicrous uh, so i'm um very happy to see this project move forward and hope that you will pass this resolution. Thank you. Thank you, Eris. There are no more hands raised in Zoom. Mayor, that concludes public comment. Thank you. We will now close the public hearing and I will bring it back to council for final comments. Seeing no additional questions or comments from council, council member Rogers, can you please make a motion? Happy to. I will move a resolution of the Council of the City of Santa Rosa adopting a resolution of necessity for the acquisition by eminent domain of temporary easement and fee, simple interests in portions of real property, commonly known as 1975 Cleveland Avenue, and more uh, particularly described as assessor parcel number 012-490-052 for the Highway 101 Bicycle and Pedestrian Overcrossing Project and waive further reading of the text. Second. We have a motion made by Council Member Rogers and a second made by Council Member Okrepke. Madam City Clerk, can you please take the vote? Thank you, Council Member Stepp. Aye. Council Member Rogers. Aye. Council Member Okrepke. Aye. Council Member Fleming. Aye. Council Member Alvarez. Aye. Vice Mayor McDonald. Aye. Mayor Rogers. Aye. Let the record show this vote passes unanimously. Thank you very much. Moving on to I Oh, great work. Moving on to item 16, written communications. We have none. We will go to item 17, our last public comment on non-agenda matters. Madam City Clerk. Thank you. We are now taking public comment on item 17, non-agenda matters. This is a second opportunity to provide public comment. 
I am seeing no members of the public wishing to provide public comment in council chamber. If you are participating via Zoom, now is the time to raise your hand by dialing star nine. I am seeing no hands being raised via Zoom. Seeing no additional items on the agenda, we will now adjourn the meeting. Thank you.